Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to Football Sunday. I'm going to be watching the Bears shortly here, but I wanted to get a quick video out because this morning I went to our monthly card show here in the area, a uh, place in Schaumburg, which is about 10, 10 to 15 minutes from where I live that's held every month. I was there last month and a few times this year, and I've actually had a lot of luck at this show. And so we were, uh, me and actually reached out to a fellow YouTuber, Steve over at Vintage on Vintage, who's also local to the area, decided we were gonna go to the show. We also tried to invite Jason from Everyday Card Collector, but he wasn't able to make it this month. So it was just he and I, um, and we went there early because I needed to actually be home. Uh, I didn't need to be, but I wanted to be home so I could watch Manchester United versus Chelsea this morning. So I wanted to go in there first thing. Um, it's a Sunday show that actually starts at like 8.30 in the morning, which is like great because you kind of can get it done and over with. There's not a lot of tables there in general, but it's also not a lot of vintage tables. So if you're looking for vintage cards, uh, it doesn't take you long to be able to get through there. Yeah, I will say that rarely do I find things I need for my sets, although I have in the past. Um, so I'm usually kind of like working just out of the, the boundaries of current projects I'm working on and kind of leaning into like future projects when I'm looking for cards at the show. But I'm also like looking for things that could be kind of unique to my collection that I haven't found before or never bought before. And I think are kind of interesting if it's combined with another purchase that I might be making. So Steve and I went to the show this morning and I ended up purchasing nine cards. Um, one is graded, one is a modern card, and everything else is going to be a vintage card from like 1953 and older. And some of them are from like some really key sets that I want to be able to kind of continue to acquire cards for in the future, probably with the exception of maybe one, no real aspirations of being able to complete the sets because of the prices of really, really big cards in the set, but I would like to continue to acquire more. Uh, so yeah, let's just kind of jump into it. I'm going to start actually, I have some mail day items too that I want to get to. So I thought I'd kind of do those first and then kind of share what I got at the show today. So it's just two cards I got in the mail recently. These are modern purchases. Uh, these are going to be more Albert Pujols cards. That I've been working on here is the 2008 Topps Heritage Refractor. Does this card look familiar to you? Yes, because I have the 2008 Chrome already in my collection, which I got back from SGC recently and graded out at 10. Uh, I will submit this for grading in the future. It's the corner, one, two corners here on the side that are far from perfect. So I'm probably thinking it's going to be maybe a nine, maybe eight and a half, but it's still a refractor from, you know, like. 14, 15, 16 years ago at this point now. So that's still pretty good considering it's just kind of been in, you know, a top loader or a soft sleeve forever, maybe even a cardboard box. So I'm happy to be able to acquire that one. It's my uh, second refractor of him in a third, actually, uh, refractor of him in a Cardinals uniform if I include the 2022 one. So really cool. It's the first one from the last, or the, the 2000s, if you will. Most of the ones I have are from 2011 onward. And then I got another Sapphire card. I'm disappointed that I lost two recent auctions on trying to get a couple more of these color Sapphire cards. So, but I'm gonna be continue to acquire, try to acquire some of the color Sapphire ones for Albert as I can. Not trying to break the rank in the process. So I probably will be targeting more ungraded ones and submit them from graded later. What's interesting about the 2021, unlike the subsequent ones where the green is actually numbered out of like 75, this is numbered out of 50. Um, so it's number 44 out of 50 in the set. So uh, I think that's always gonna have value. A card number to 50 out of a popular product like this, there's not a lot of color parallels in Sapphire in the ways that there are in regular Topps Chrome or the regular base flagship set. So happy to have those in my collection and my growing Albert Pujols collection. All right, so I'm going to show you my one graded card first. So we put up these and we're going to set our background here, show you how it kind of fits in. So 1953 Tops is a set that I don't have a lot of cards for. Uh, I pretty much sold all of my loose cards for the set. Um, I only have graded cards with the exception of one in my collection that's in my pile to be graded, and it's a common, so it's nothing too exciting. And... Um, so I was able to acquire another graded card for this set, which brings me up to, I had five, now I have six graded cards from the set, so nothing too crazy. Um, 
four of the five were Hall of Famers. So this one's not a Hall of Famer, but a name that's known to baseball history too. So the ones I have right now, I have like Roy Campanella. This was in a two. I picked this up at one of the Sports Spectacular, so it might be on my list. I want to do my top five or ten uh, of Sports Spectacular pickups that I want to do before the next one. Then I got an Eddie Matthews. I got this from the local card shop during the pandemic. I think this price has gone up a little bit on this card. This is a four in this one. So I have those. Then everyone else I have are New York Yankees. So we have Johnny Mize. It's one of the ones I have. Beautiful card of Johnny right there. Uh, one I got last month was Billy Martin. I'm going to put him there. And then I picked one up, another Sports Spectacular 2, and graded it. This was the Yogi Berra. Came back a three and a half. That one probably definitely will be on the list. And the one I got today, you know, of the Yankees, it's not a Hall of Famer, so I'm not going to be sharing with you a Whitey Ford or a Mickey Mantle card today, but I will be sharing with you a Johnny Singh, which came back at two, and I got it for all of $20, all in on it. So I think possibly maybe it was submitted for grading. Somebody didn't quite notice that there's a stain here. So I'm not sure exactly what the stain is from, but you could definitely see it with the naked eye. Um, other than wise, it probably would have graded much higher, just kind of looking at the corners and the centering other, and, and other factors with the card. It may have come out as like a four, but I was able to get it a uh, two. So we got four Yankees here in my collection so far. Um, no White Sox, oddly, uh, but at some point I probably will acquire some of the White Sox because we have some cool cards of Billy Pierce, Minnie Minoso, Sherman Lawler, or some of the great ones from that set. Uh, but Yankees are never bad to have from this era. Um, so I'm pretty pleased to have the four of these guys here in the background as we kind of move on with the other cards. Sane obviously is pretty popular for the Spawn and Sane and Pray for Rain uh, saying that was popular when they played for the Boston Braves. This was obviously after that time because he was acquired by the Yankees. This was actually an all-star season for him in 53. One of his three, the other two were with the Boston Braves. Um, Johnny Sane is kind of more known locally by kind of being a pitching coach for many, many years for the White Sox organization. Um, then I think he was like in the front office kind of helping with scouting and things like that too, if I'm not mistaken. But Johnny Sane had a long career in baseball, not just on the mound. Um, so, all right, so let's go through all the cards that are not graded. The only modern one's pickup was this Juan Soto from 2021. It's one of the league leader cards. This is actually the batting leader cards. So it had him winning the batting title in the National League over Freddie Freeman, who just faced off in the recent World Series, recently concluded. So I think you never go wrong with a Juan Soto card for, I think I got it for $2 all in. You bought one of those online, you know you'd pay a little bit more once you put tax and shipping on there. So almost a no-brainer. All right, some other cards from 53. So I haven't picked up any of these from the set. So these sets were made, a regional set that I'm going to show you here, that were made for Milwaukee and Milwaukee only, and they were sold there uh, in packages of cookies, or you can mail in and get the sets, at least for this one particular. So they made them in 52, 53, 54, sorry, 53, 54, and 55. The 54 is probably the more famous of the sets because it has the Hank Aaron in that set. 53 still has some uh, firepower with Warren Spahn and Eddie Matthews, but I've never acquired any of these cards before. Uh, and then I was able to find these in a big vintage box. Uh, so all the other cards I'm going to buy are, are part of like a large box. Some of them weren't sorted all that well. I think they had been thumbed through and tossed back in and things like that. So you found like a lot of like little surprises in there as you kind of went through the boxes. And these were three I thought were kind of interesting little surprises because they just kind of showed up out of nowhere, but they were back to back to back. Um, and these are the Johnston cookie cards. So I have three from the Milwaukee Braves. It was only the Milwaukee Braves. You can get Eddie Matthews with this one and Warren Spahn, as I mentioned before, it's a 25 card set. Seems pretty reasonable to put it together uh, because it doesn't have the Hank Aaron card, which gets pretty expensive. The backs are pretty, actually pretty attractive for the time period. It's got a full stat line on there, very similar to like 53 tops on there and 53 Bowman. Actually, it looks a little bit more like a 53 Bowman when you kind of look at the back of it than a 53 Tops card. Um, so I kind of wonder if there was any association between them or not. But 
Um, pretty cool looking item, I thought. And that's just one of three. Here's the other, Sibby Sisti. And probably the more well-known player of the bunch in a previous uh, several time all-star was Sid Gorman. Sid Gorman actually came off a pretty good season there where he had, in 52, he had 25 home runs, 75 knocked in. The previous year, in 51, he had 29 home runs and 109 RBIs knocked in. So he was a pretty um, significant player with this team and also with the Giants teams before then, before he got pulled over. He's part of the 48 Bowman set, too. That's why I was familiar with it. So we got three of the 25, um, which is about one-eighth of the set already done there. I decided to kind of finish it. And they look really cool. I think they look really nice. They present pretty well with 53 tops cards. You can see here in the back as well as 53 Bowman. They just kind of fit right in as far as cards from that era. So those were the Johnston Cookies. Got another one from 52 tops. This one is a miscut, you know, but that's going to be the one kind of major flaw of the card. It's got a little bit of a gnarly corner up here, which is fine. Um, I probably will want to put it in my to submit for grading pile at some point to kind of add it into my 52 tops card collection, which isn't massive, but I probably will do a video about that probably pretty soon because I don't think I've shown them all off in one space before. Um, but there's Bob Miller and all the ones I have are actually graded until I just picked, acquired this one. And nothing from the 40s, but we do have some cards from the 30s. Same box as I was kind of shuffling through there, I found uh, three Gowdies from 1933. And, and these had been well played with. They had seen better days. They had seen some things, if you will. Uh, but that's kind of how I get 33 Gowdies, you know, for, for in you know, pretty cheap prices. And I submit them for grading and they kind of come back in case and it looked a little bit better than they did before when they're just loose. So I have three from the set. Um, not anybody really significant. We got a player from the Cardinals, player from, I'm sorry, player from the Columbus Redbirds, uh, actually, and we have a card from the Cardinals and a card from the Washington Senators. So there is some minor league players in the set that have major league experience, such as this one kind of starting off here, uh, which is Andy High. Uh, it definitely has some wear on the front here, which is fine, but otherwise it kind of presents pretty well because it has most of its paper. Most of its corners are still kind of have a 90 degree angle to them. Whereas the other ones are going to be much more rounded as you kind of get there. Not perfectly centered, but that's okay. Um, I would guess getting it back graded, it's it's a one. It's got staining all over it. Um, maybe authentic because of the paper loss. Then we have another one from the St. Louis Cardinals. This is Roscoe Holmes. Actually, 32 was his very last season, even though they made a card of him in 33. And this is already after a couple year hiatus. He came back and played for the Cardinals just for a few at bats uh, in 32. And he got a card in the 33 set here. Uh, but he was a player that played more for him, them within the 1920s. Um, beautiful blue background there. It does have a crease. You know, but what do you expect from cards from the 1930s if you're, unless you're really going to pay up for them? Um, looks good to me. It doesn't have as much staining on there. Uh, so it's definitely very legible uh, front and back happy with that one. And the other one is Walter Stewart, who also went by Lefty Stewart from the Washington Senators. Now this one has seen better days. Uh, the staining really does kind of show all over the card, um, but these were relatively inexpensive, and I think when you can get these pretty inexpensive, that's great. Um, I haven't checked how many I have now, but I think I have, like, including these, like, eight or nine different ones from the set, which is pretty good. So here they are all together. So that's that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. Just some new mail day stuff and some stuff that came up from the card show today. I think of all the ones I picked up today, the probably the one I was maybe most excited to acquire probably was the Gowdies, but uh, just because I already have these other Yankee cards, the same fits in here really nicely. Um, with my Yankee collection for 53 um, so far. That's it. And I'll hopefully maybe be back later this week. I'm going to try and maybe squeeze in one more episode before next weekend. But no guarantees. But we'll see. All right. Have a great rest of your weekend, guys.